Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be taking you step by step through the process that I take when I'm creating a logo type. Um, this is by no means the only way to do it, this is just the way that I do it and um, I know a lot of people have been asking me how I go how I go about making it so I thought I'd make a video showing you how I do it and um, as you can see I'm starting off here by just simply drawing out rough ideas and this would be for, well I came up with my own brief basically and this would be for a, like, a, just like a sort of street brand, like clothing brand called Over um, so I've just gone for a r very rough sort of look. I'm not going to go through how to create this sort of type because that's not what the video is about but um, as you can see I'm just using single strokes to create um, the letters. It just gives it this rough sort of street style look. I mean a lot of, you'll, you'll notice a lot of street brands at the moment are taking up this, um, this sort of custom type logo. So I've gone with that. Um, the pens that I'm using in this are Crayola markers. I'm using the jumbo markers and the skinny ones. I'm not sure what they're actually called. And at one point, I do switch to using a highlighter as well. But um, I think I end up going with a sketch from the Crayola pen. But um, yeah, as you can see, basically just writing it over and over and over again until you finally, well, yeah, you keep writing it over and over again, and you'll eventually just get different, slightly different versions. And then you can just pick one that you like. Um, but obviously. I've cut this quite this down quite a bit in comparison to how many times I'd actually do it if I was working on a commissioned logo I'd be I'd probably draw it a good 50 60 times until I find something that I like and then you can just start to um, you know refine it and tidy up a bit change little parts of it so here you can see me going back around one of the pieces that I thought was the best one out of the ones that I drew and I've just got the skinny marker going around it now um, to make it darker and make it more visible and um, yeah usually you might want to do this with um, a fine liner rather than doing it with a Crayola marker like that like I'm doing this but I'm just doing this to save time for the sake of the tutorial but um, yeah if you're doing it maybe use a fine liner and then fill it in with either a marker or a thicker fine liner now you'll also see me with this white pen and what I'm doing is because I've already draw I've drawn this new piece of type sorry about that um, now I've drawn this new piece of type over previous pieces that I actually did, which I didn't like. Um, when I put this into Photoshop to um, duplicate it and create multiple versions of it, which you'll see soon, um, this just makes it easier to cut it out and keep the type by itself rather than having all the other type in the background. You can also use this white pen as well to like, you know, straighten up the lines instead of having like little bit sticking out that you don't like you can just go it's like basically having tip x but being able to control it a lot more so yeah you can just use that to sort of reshape the type and I'm also using it in this case as well to basically outline it so it's easier to cut out when I bring it into Photoshop right so once you've scanned it in and you've dragged it into Photoshop like I have here um, what I'm doing is now basically just cutting out and it's a smart object so you want to rasterize the layer and just I press Control J, which would be Command J, just to duplicate that shape or well, that that um, crop of the image, and then I've just rotated it just to get it straightened out. I'm just using these guides here just to make sure it's as straight as I can get it. I mean, it's not going to be perfectly straight because it's doesn't have all the letters don't sit on the same baseline. And what I'm doing here with the eraser is just getting rid of all the darker parts that I don't think the next step will completely get rid of. So what you do is double click on the thumbnail of the layer and this top slider here. If you slide this across from the left from the right hand side, sorry, it'll get rid of the um, the white parts. Once you've got that, all you're gonna do is basically duplicate it a rough amount of times depending on how many times you think you'll need it, because you're just gonna be using these to um, to just test ideas. And what I like to do is usually get one or two of them and change the opacity down to fifty percent so that you can easily go over these when you're on the paper and you can just change the letters and make slight adjustments. Once you've done that, just just print it out. Okay, so once you've got it printed out, you can, if, if in this case I'm using the pencil, to go around and just make some slight adjustments to one of the um, pieces of type that I put down to 50% opacity. 
and I'm just making slight adjustments to it just to like make it flow a little better and give some more spaces between the letters and the connections so all I'm doing now is going around it in a pencil and then later going to be going around it with a pen but I'm, again I'm going to be using the marker to do this but you might want to use a fine liner to make sure it's neater so yeah I'm just going to do this with a pencil outline it and once you've made the adjustments you want then go around it in the pen and fill it basically once you've finished filling the type then you can just rub out the pencil lines that you previously put in if they're obviously if they're sticking out of the type then just use a small piece of rubber I've just got a small piece that I cut off a full size rubber and just rub out the small little edges that you don't want like I said before with the white pen you can go around and straighten up some of the edges which is what I'm doing here with the white pen um, all the links to the pens and stuff that I use I'll put them all in the description so if you need to buy them or find them find out what they're called then just look in the description and they'll be there for you Right, so now I'm going to move on to some of these other pieces of type and just experiment with them and see what I can do to make them maybe look better. So, um, the first one here at the top, I'm just adding sort of like a 3D sort of line outline around it. Um, but I don't think I don't think I'm going to actually go ahead and use this one. I'm not too keen on it. I don't think it looks that well. So, as you can see, I'm going to go on to the next one now and just try different things on each of them. This is why you print it out multiple times so you can go back and. Um, obviously make sorry not make um, you can go back and experiment with different ideas that you had without having to completely redraw the piece of type from start to finish again with this second one that I'm doing all I'm all I'm doing is with the white pen is just doing a line through the middle of each of the black lines to give it sort of like an outline kind of look but um, this doesn't to necessarily work on all pieces of type it can look good on some pieces but um, for this style I don't think it works very well after trying it, I just don't think it works so I probably won't be using this one either but then again that's the that's the point of it, to experiment to see what looks good then the third one that I did, I actually not, I'm not really too sure what that was but it was kind of like trying to make a shadow um, which didn't really work very well so that one definitely won't be being used but it was just worth a try wasn't it um, so now I'll go back up to, I'll go back up to the top one now and start playing around with this one seeing what what I can do with it and as you can see I'm sort of adding like a white fill but leaving a slight black outline and doing it halfway so it's kind of almost like a shiny sort of look but I'm not I'm not entirely sure what you'd call this but um, yeah I think it can look good depending on well what piece of type you're doing it on and for this I think it does kind of work so maybe I'll experiment with this when I've got it digital I can play around with it and see if it works I also um, went around the the small 3D part that I added before. I did it in pencil so you couldn't really see it and just for the sake of the video I went around it in a pen just so you could actually see what it looked like. Um, as you can see it doesn't really look too great so I probably won't be using that. Okay so now that we've got the drawing finished we're going to move on to the vectoring stage. So you're going to go to Illustrator, open a new document. I'm just going to make mine 1080p and you want to get your image that you scanned in of your drawing mine's on here, wait for it to load I apologize for the uh, clicking and the keystrokes and stuff I've not got um, a shock mount yet for my mic so just have to bear with me with that then once you get your drawing just drag it into Illustrator and you can, in fact I'll make it a little bit bigger actually this you don't necessarily have to do this I just prefer it so when you go around it with the stroked outline it's not as thick um, and then you're gonna lock that layer double click the little thumbnail thing and then click on dim image to 50% press that and what you're gonna do from there is make a new layer and make sure you've got your stroke here set to black and the uh, fill just take that off by pressing this and then what you're gonna do is make a new layer above that press Control R or Command R which will bring up the guides and just click on it from the left and click on it from the top and drag them down highlight them both then go to a line and press the middle one here and the middle one here if you haven't got a line just go to window uh, yeah window at the top and then it will say a line just click that and it will bring it down into the palette for you once you've done that you can lock that layer and um, we don't need that yet we just need to use that layer for centering the logo so you can turn that one off 
and then click onto the second layer, the middle one, which is what we're going to now use to actually go around the type. Um, let's make this black again. Oops, there we go. And uh, if you've watched my tutorial on how to vector type, you'll notice that I use horizontal and verticals, and occasionally I'll use um, what are they called now diagonals. That's the one. Um, yeah, just to it just tends to make your type flow a lot more, like the curves in your type. It makes it flow a lot more smoothly. Uh, I'm not going to go in too much depth on that in this video, but if you want to see that video, I'll make sure I link it in the description. I'll put a caption up on the screen. So I'm just going to go around it all now. I might fast forward this bit because obviously there's a tutorial for it, so you don't have to sit here and waste like 20 minutes watching me back to this. But uh, yeah, I'll go through some of it. So like this, how it's more of a flat edge more than a rounded edge. I'm just gonna put both the anchor points there first. And what I'm gonna do is drag this one in a little bit, drag it up a little bit more. So you can see it's not like a nice rounded curve, it's sort of like a flat edge. And then holding Alt and Shift, drag it out. And then go for the next outermost point, which would be down here, click and drag and pull this out a little bit more, holding Alt and Shift. And you probably pull this one down a little bit as well, and pull this one back out. It's just a matter of trial and error with this. Once you get good at it, you can do it quite fast. I'm still fairly new to it myself, but um, I'm getting better at it. So click there, drag this one out a bit more, and then go for a horizontal here. And that doesn't quite line up at the bottom, so Alt and Shift on this handle, drag it out. And that doesn't align there, so same with this one, we'll drag it in. And now you can see it flows nicely. I'm just going to click there, click up here. Holding Alt to bring out a new anchor, and hold Shift so it's straight. And then just at the bottom here, click, drag. And that's going a bit too far, so pull that in a bit. I mean, you don't you don't have to follow your type completely perfect, because sometimes you will, there will be mistakes in your drawing. So, um, like this for example. That that looks better with a big light rate goes larger. So say I was to bring this in now, it just kind of looks flat in a way. It's hard to explain how it looks, but yeah, it doesn't seem to flow right because this curves round, and that one just sort of drops. So I'm gonna bring this back out. It's not. It's more of like a a nice cu smooth curve. <laughs> um, and this point here, you can see how on the actual drawing, it hits a point and it stops and then it goes up. You can follow that, or you can. Well, I'm going to actually follow it, actually, to be honest. Um, Alt and Shift, and I'm going to give this one a diagonal one just to help it curve in that direction a bit more. Drag it out, bring it up to the top about here, click and drag. It's a nice curve. And bring this one back in, maybe bring it down to about here. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to drag this one pretty far out. And then come down to the bottom here with another horizontal. Make an adjustment to this one. We'll pull that back in a little bit. And that's a nice curve there. And then for the last one, go for another diagonal again. It's the same, similar sort of curve. Drag it up. And then this, I'm going to add like a little lip to. Sorry, <laughs> need the pop filter there. Um, add like a bit of a lip to all the letters. So. By doing this, I'm just going to click up here, click and drag. Maybe bring that in a bit, and pull this out a bit further. That's better. And from here, I'm just going to bring it out very short, and bring one about here, a little bit lower than the point you've just made, and give it a diagonal. Oops. No, maybe not a diagonal. This is um, the experimenting point. Let's try a try another horizontal down here, maybe a bit closer. Hmm, no, that doesn't look right. Let's go just for a vertical a bit higher. That, that looks right, actually. And just make sure when it's doing it, it's slightly dipping down from this point. And then this is sort of like a flat top, but it's not completely flat, so I'm just going to make that one a little bit long and make this one a tiny bit longer. There we go, that looks nice. 
So now if you, you see if you click on this and then uh, invert the colours so it goes to a fill, fill colour, you can see that it's doesn't look messy it looks like all the curves on it are nice curves and not it's not like messy and like points sticking out everywhere right so now you've seen me make that letter I'm just gonna probably speed up the video for this part and do the next letters fairly fast when I get to this point um, I don't know what it is about things like this, like the underline, I just never seem to be able to actually do them, so what I do is unlock the background layer, and oops, unlock it, and just rotate at a 90 degree angle, holding shift, like that, so now it's up here, and now I can work on it vertically, which for some reason I seem to be able to do quite easily, so start working on it now, vertically. Oops, there we go. Center. I don't know what it is about these, I just never seem to be able to actually get them right first time. It takes me quite a lot, uh, quite a few attempts sometimes. Let's bring this back actually. See, like this, now it's just. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Alright. This. Right, so I'm just going to get the main points down first and then I'm going to adjust them. Just so it's a little bit easier. I've already got the points down there. Pull that out. I'll add that extra bit in a second actually. Let's go for horizontal. Well, vertical. And I'll connect it. See, it's, it just doesn't flow right, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here and. Um, not have them horizontal and vertical. I'm just going to adjust them a bit just to make it flow better. I mean, if things like this, if it's not the actual letters themselves and it's just an underline, it doesn't necessarily matter because as long as the curves look perfect, they're fine. But um, yeah, when you're actually working on the type itself, I'd recommend sticking to it and persevering, trying to work through it. Um, now let's add this little last bit. Click on that point. Let's go for a a bit further down do a diagonal pull this in a little bit another diagonal there in fact let's try and make it a flat edge I think that'll suit this better oops and bring it in about there that looks fine oops let's make give it a flat edge I'm just gonna bring these ones in a bit more so it's more it's more less rounded it's more of a flat sort of edge and then to get this back underneath it perfectly where it was, all you do is select. Oops, you have to select both of these, and then select the back, the drawing as well in the background. Make sure you unlock the layer actually, <laughs> and then just holding Shift, just rotate it the opposite way from which you did it previously. Lock that layer, and as you can see, you've now got this back here. And now we can highlight everything that we've done, and we can give it a fill. So now we've got the finished piece of type. If you've if you've seen any mistakes, you can go back and obviously make some little changes to it. And what I'm actually going to do here now is turn off the background layer because I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to fix the space in between the letters a bit. So I'm going to move the V close to the O. I'm just going to move them all at the same time so it all stays how it should be. Just move that in a bit more. And then holding Shift, I'm just going to deselect these two. Move the E and the R closer in, so it's roughly the same distance between the O and the V. You can use the arrow keys as well to make small jumps like that. That looks about, that looks right. Deselect these three from the E, so now you've just got the R. And now I'm just going to bring, oh, sorry, holding shift still. That does big jumps. Um, we'll put it about there. And as you can see, the E's sticking over a bit, so I'm just going to go to the direct select tool here. And select these two points click and then hold shift to select two of them and just going to drag it down so it's within the other within the top part of the R so there and I'm gonna slightly adjust these actually because I don't think it looks quite right maybe put this on a diagonal I think that looks better and then drag this up and maybe pull it in a little bit 
I think this might need to be a bit smaller actually, so I'll drag that a bit closer. And move these two points so it's overlapping the bottom of the E, so it's a connection. And things like this where it's not like a smooth rounded connection out, you can tell it's two separate like lines. I think that looks good, it looks like a really rough kind of style, which personally I like. This needs to be adjusted though, because the R should flow up into it, and this one you can see how it's sort of curving into the line, which personally I don't like. So I'm just going to bring this up a bit and adjust it, maybe to about there. Mm, maybe a bit higher. Oops, let me move both the points. So now it flows nicely into the top of the letter. I think that looks fine. And obviously then you can adjust this. So let's let's turn this a little bit. Let's adjust it. Right, so now we've got this. And now we can experiment with it and see what other things we can do with it. So I'm just going to bring this over to the top here. And the next part I'm going to do is something quite a few people have asked me how to do because they've seen it on quite a lot of the logo work that I do. So I'm just going to show you that now. So what you're going to do is highlight the whole thing, do Control c or Command c to copy it, lock that layer, turn it off, and you can take, keep it on if you want, and make a new layer and do Command f which will paste it directly on top of where you copied it from. I'm just going to hold Shift and drag it across a little bit. And then what we're going to do is go to Pathfinder and like merge the whole, unite, it says unite, so just merge the whole thing together like this. And then what you're going to do is do Command C, Command F again, and then open this new layer and go to the back, the one at the bottom, which is, well, just the one at the bottom. And you're going to add a stroke to it. And then when you go to the stroke, you're just going to bump it up to about, I don't know, whatever you think looks nice, whatever you want. So I'm going to go to about, say, 17 looks nice. So let's go to exp uh, Object, Expand, OK. And then we're going to unite it again with the same thing. So now you've got this black outline and everything seems to be all right. Let's go to the top layer now. As you can see, it's kind of, you can see it's like in the middle of it. And all you're going to do with this is now make this a white color. So now it's like you've sort of got this outline logo. And what we're going to do now is copy this, doing command C or control C, lock that layer, make a new layer, oops, and we're going to paste it again, control F or command F, drag it across, and we're going to make a different version this time, so in the middle bit here, we're going to get rid of all these white, part, these white parts, so just going to click around it all, all this, I'm just going to set it to stroke so I can see where I'm going and just go around everything like this open the layer and then drag this new shape that you've just made drag that above the um, compound the back black thing <laughs> leaves me words uh, yeah drag it above drag it above that or below it, it doesn't necessarily matter and give it a black fill so let's make it black and you're gonna select that one and the bottom one which is the black one as well and unite those two. So now you've got your type over a black background. So as you can see now we've got three different versions. I'm just going to unlock this a second to move it over. So now you can see we've got three different versions here. We've got the original, then we've got the one where it's an outline, and then you've got the completely filled one. And from here now you can try different things. So for example, let's unlock this layer. We'll keep all these ones on this layer. So just holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to. Uh, oops, sorry click it first and then hold shift and alt and drag and it'll duplicate it for you or you can just do control c command uh, control c control f and then drag it down if you like but this is just how i do it it's faster um, and all you're going to do is click on the white type and using your arrow keys you're just going to say let's go to the left four or five times one two three four five and then go up the same one two three four five and let's go down one and right one actually because it's a bit too close so now it sort of gives it this 3D kind of look. I mean, you don't have to go with that. You could just, whoops, you could just do it so it's, um, let me get that back. 
you could just do it so it's only going to the left or only going to the right and you don't have to go up or down that's completely up to you and now let's do the same with this one so white one let's go four to the left see this this what I mean you could leave it like that four to the left or you could do four to the right or five to the right for example but I'm just gonna keep it consistent with the one on the left hand side of it so I do four up as well so we've got that and then another one we could do is let's drag this one down again and you're gonna select the black background part come up to effect um, distort and transform click on transform and this is like an actual 3d sort of thing you can do so make sure preview is selected and where it says horizontal let's go for 0.5 and then vertical will do the same 0.5 and then what you want to do here is where it says copies let's put about 20 copies and then just press the preview button on and off as you can see it gives it this like 3d drop shadow sort of thing um, I think that's actually quite nice that one I don't think it's too much let's, have, let's go to 25 actually oops not 256 yeah that's probably a bit better and then press OK once you've got that you can go to object expand appearance and then press unite again and then it might take a while never mind and it just basically puts it all into one shape for you and to save yourself a bit of time what you can do is if you want to do it with a different one bring this one down select the background of it again and then when you go to effect it will already say apply transform and that will just apply the exact same thing that you've just, just done to the previous piece so if you press that see it does it to this one as well and then we can do the same thing object expand appearance and then merge them. So you see you've got two fairly similar looking but slightly different. Like personally I prefer this one, it's got a bit of a gap in it, I don't know, I think it just gives it a more of a 3D look. Personally if I was going to choose any of them I'd be going with this one. Um, and let's try from the from the original drawing this one here, how we've got this sort of white inside look that gives it a bit of a shiny sort of look. We'll try this, we'll see, I've, I've never done this before, so uh, <laughs> this is all new to me as well. So I'm just going to try and work for it and see if I can do it. Right, so let's try it on my favourite one. We'll drag this across. So what I've done now is duplicated that, Control c Control f And I'm trying to think how I might be able to do this. Um, Let's duplicate it. Let's paste it again, just so we've got enough cop. Just so we've got enough copies, just to be safe. And for the top one, let's switch it to an outline. Make it a colour so we can see it. Right. And let's go up to about. Um. Yeah. Let's go up to about four, and then expand it. So now you've just got this outline. Um. Okay. Right. I'm going to ungroup it, so right now I've got individual things, and then I'm going to ungroup the white type underneath it as well, so now we've got individual sections that we can cut, so now we're going to select the outline and the white type, and we're going to use minus front, which has taken it off, and then we're going to do the same with this piece here, same with them two, and then we're going to do the same with this one at the bottom as well. So in theory, now we should have these pieces that should be a different colour if I change it. Might worked, okay. Um, right, okay, from there let's go to, let's just make crop. So let's click here with a pen tool, click here, give it a bit of a curve. And then we'll just go around here. And then we'll select all of these. You want you to select the bottom one, and um, we'll go to the shape, uh, yep, shape build tool, and then on these bits here, just hold Alt and click like this. And once you've got rid of all of them, you can simply just click on this top piece, the big shape that you just use, and then you can. Oh God, that went horribly wrong. <laughs> uh, why is it? Oh wait, no, sorry, that was right. And then you can just delete that bit as well because you don't need that. Right, and this bit, and this bit. <laughs> right, okay, so 
now we have these and I'm going to let's ungroup these if they're in a group yeah that's in a group so what you want to do is ungroup I'm going to put a gradient on these and if you've tried applying gradients before in Illustrator and you're doing it to separate pieces you'll know it puts the gradient on each individual piece which isn't what I'm looking for so just click on all these make sure none of them are in groups and none of them are in compound paths and once you've done that oops, select them all right so none of these are in groups so just select them all holding shift and then right click right so something's still in a compound path oh no this is in a group that's why one group Right, so now you want to select it all, again, holding shift, and you're going to go to make compound path, nope that didn't work, uh, make sure that's selected in the middle as well, and make compound, compound path, right, okay, so now in theory if we add a gradient to this it should add it to the whole shape, not just each individual piece, and it's worked, okay that's good. Um, Let's try bringing this. In fact, no, let's just make this. Let's try a gradient first and then we'll try a flat color. So we'll do this and we'll change this to 90 degrees. And we'll drag the white up a little bit so it's not as prominent. That kind of looks like a silvery sort of metal, doesn't it? Um, that looks kind of nice, actually. So now we'll try it again duplicate it and drag it up. This time we'll take the gradient off and we'll just give it a flat colour, we'll just give it black. See how that looks. Uh, it looks okay but it's kind of hard to read the type but you see what I'm getting at here with experimenting you can do all sorts of things on Illustrator just see what comes out and personally if I was going, if I was going to choose one of these it would probably be between these two. I'm not too sure how how I feel about this and I think it looks nice but that's not my sort of thing having this gradient but you know it's something you can try and you never know if it's what your client wants then obviously it's good um, but yeah I think for this I'm gonna stick with this one I hope this tutorial has helped you guys it's not been um, necessarily a tutorial it's been more of a walkthrough of the way that I go about um, creating a logo type so uh, I hope this has helped you and hope it's in like sort of help me explain to you how I actually go through the process of making a logo type when you see me posting them and speed arts and whatnot. Um, but yeah, if you want me to do some more typography based tutorials just let me know and I'll try and get on that and try and think of some unique ideas. Thanks for watching guys.